browse something? If you have a hunch that something should be there, don't browse. And, and then when they got, got to the new hall, they changed the spelling right off the bat, too. They probably had a bad experience when they went and, you know, tried to get, you know, time to land or something. Somebody was like, how do you spell it? Yeah, tell them, oh, just put it like this. We'll, we'll just do it like this. Well, the lady at the city told me to just put the first three letters to help solve some And sometimes you can do that unless the first letter, like <laughs> Louise, fell totally off. off. Yeah, um, <coughs> sometimes you can get away with that, sometimes you can't. So that's, you know, it's like said, it's to, yeah, to your to your eye, you may catch something like that. But if you're, you know, if you're searching online, it's not it's never going to catch something like that. And some of them say, well, when you search, you have to at least put in two letters or something like that. So there, there's a lot of pitfalls. Yeah, and, so, well, and there was another example when we came from Germany. My name was spelled K E S N E R, but the military on his papers changed it to C A S T N E R. I mean, there's nothing similar about that. <laughs> this is just fun stuff you have to deal with, and I think everybody in this room has. I'm not checking my email. Okay, we were right at noon. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and this stuff, I will, I will let you read all that on your own. Technology, if you're not using the computer, do it. Talk a lot about websites. It's not the way of the future anymore, it's the now. So if you're not using the computer, find somebody that can help you with it. Libraries are great places for that because they have all these resources available and have people that are paid to sit there and help you. Maybe, maybe not for hours on end. I work for years at a library, so I know this. Um, but they're there to help you and use that resource. There's also, Del, did you bring up the LDS Family History Centers? I talk about family search. But um, Family Search, a branch of that is the LDS um, Family History Centers in various towns, and you can find information. Abilene right has one here on North Trump, <coughs> open on Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 8. I found it. The people are awesome about helping you. Mm -hmm. and, you can, and they're all over the world, yes. and you can contact them to do research in that area for you. And they, they will ship microfilm. Do they ship books as yes. well? You can get things shipped from the Family History Library. The premier family history library in the world, which is in Salt Lake City. You can go to these branch libraries and they will ship things from that main branch to these local centers for you to look at. So all those microfilm records that may not be online, you can have them shipped when you go to, you know, call the local center, go over there, and they will contact the main library in Salt Lake and have it sent to you. And free access to Ancestry.com, full three, all the sites, they pay a subscription and you can access them there at the center. Yes. No, so the uh, Salvation Army has a, a really good ancestral database. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. new. See, I've heard as much more groups as groups learned from me. I don't know where it is or where you get a hold of it, but uh, I had not heard that. Uh, I've but heard it is as, as good, if not better, than the LDS. What was it? Salvation Army. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's that's the first I've heard of it. So. And also, if and it's surprisingly it's affordable. Mm -hmm. If you want to have your <laughs> DNA done. <laughs> There's a, a huge database that's, that's generating, and according to the permissive you want to let out to the public, uh -huh. people can find matching DNA, and you may find relatives that are doing the same thing uh -huh. that you didn't know about simply because DNA matches. Right. Mm -hmm. At Salvation Army as well? Uh, no. This. Oh, I, I did the, 23 yeah, and uh, me. You just had to get on the the internet and, and, and find it. I, yeah, I'm not done with it. Yeah. That's it. It's $99. It's really come down. Yeah. And Ancestry.com does it. Yes. Can I just back it up a little bit? Sure. You didn't mention Mormon Church. Don't they have a Family Search is... Is that it? FamilySearch.org is the, the one that's run by the LDS. And the Family History Library... The LDS, is, that's an acronym? But they they're the premier genealogy resource. And Family Search is their online arm. And the branch libraries are also connected to them. And I'm just about well, I am out of time, so I will I will leave the rest of this. This is just talking about, you know, organizing organizing your stuff on the computer as well as you know doing all your paperwork. Um, I talked about a few databases, and I think I talked about most of these. Um, access to newspapers.
newspaper archive. A lot of libraries have that. It's you know, an international newspaper database. You have this on your internet, on your website? This this is all in the handout. Everything is up here you have. But I mean it's on your website. I don't have a website. Oh yeah. Okay. Well I don't think anybody would visit my website. <laughs> No, everything that's on here okay. is in your handout. Um, a lot of this stuff you can get. I know Ancestry, uh, Handbook of Texas, Handbook of Texas, and, and Heritage Quest. Pretty much any library in Texas has access to those through Texture. Um, access to newspaper archive. A lot of libraries have that, and it's a great place to go and, and look for. Yes, ma'am. You can just go to Handbook of Texas online. Yeah. You don't have to go to the library. It's, it's, it's a Handbook of Texas is a free one. But it's a <laughs> It's sometimes they're you know, next to each other, uh, but it's a free view. Just go to Angles, Texas, and find it. Um, and then there's just some more websites. And at the end of this, I just put some cute pictures of USB drives because there's some really cute ones out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that one. But <laughs> this stuff is basically about okay, how to save files, what to name them. A lot of it is very similar to how you do it when you're writing your forms as far as using capitalization for surnames. Um, I like that one. USB that looks like a folder, so you can make folders on it. Um, but you know, this is a little bit about one way to organize your folders on your computer. This isn't just for USB, this is if you want to put it on your hard drive or whatever. But creating different folders for different families or you know, however you want to do that. Um, and then just how to name your files. And one thing that trips people up is if you leave a space in one place and not in another, it'll change the order of things. So I'll put that in here. So make sure that you do, like everything I do, um, will look similar to this. So I have my, my surname in all caps, comma the first name, and I have a record type here, and I'll separate that with space, hyphen, space, whatever, space, hyphen, space, and then whatever. So you can see, like census, uh, death certificate, all that kind of stuff, but it all stays in the same format with the same number of spaces, same punctuation, because that will matter. Because once the next time you open that up, it's going to change. Uh, where they are. So here's here's some examples of how I do it, and you don't have to. That's just <coughs> that just makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And well, there it is. Who, who are you saving this stuff for primarily for yourself because you enjoy doing it because you're curious and you want to do it? Um, but this is for posterity as well. So make sure that this is going to make sense to somebody. You know, we're all going to go someday and somebody's going to be going through boxes in our house or going through our computer. Make sure that when they open this up, they will know what it is and they can easily find their way through it or else it's going to get tossed. And all, all that hard work and everything you've done is going to be gone. So, and also impart your love of this into the next generation so that they will want to keep it. Could I have just a comment on that? Please, Please do. Uh, a number of years ago, I downloaded the web pages of a former Murray professor. He had a whole massive web page and burned them all on CD. Part of the inspiration for doing that was that when one of my uncles died, his last year he had put together a giant collection of slides of, of wildflowers because he was into photography and wildfire stuff. Family had no idea what to do with it because it took up a whole lot of space, so they basically gave the whole thing to goodwill. Now, the deal with the CD is when you die, the next people might have no clue what to do with it, but it's so small, it's easily stored. So they can just store it away and not throw it out and, and, until at some point someone comes along who does you know, know what to do with it. So I think, I mean, part of this is like if you can save stuff in a real small, easily storable format, as opposed to big mass of the stuff. Yeah. You know. But I'm worried about the changes in technology when you won't be able to read that old form. Yeah, well, there's, you know, yeah, it's getting fairly scary by USB or on an external hard drive or something like that. So, yeah, for now, it, it seems like things have kind of leveled off, whereas, you know, we're not, we're not putting things on floppy disk anymore, but it looks like USB and stuff like that is kind of here to stay. So, I think we're, we're we're getting somewhat safe now as long as you're using them on the JPEG format. Something like that should be okay. Well, and another place to research local is historical societies. I yes. fell into 100 years worth of pictures 
this summer when I went to Illinois, the, uh, my family, just going to a historical society <coughs> was open a few hours a week. And um, that's a, plus you can put yours when you do it, put, put a CD, put a paper copy on file with your historical society, your genealogical society locally, where your family's from, the libraries, a lot of them want that stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. 